Hello, what is good? I am Juliana Page and I have a word of encouragement for you on today. I was thinking about this concept and even how I fall into this, especially since I've lived a majority of my life not walking with God. It's taken everything in me just to learn this new walk of surrender. That seemed like such a foreign word to me and I never saw how you get so much more accomplished when you actually surrender, right? So I wanted to share on this idea of don't frustrate the grace, okay? So what is behind this idea? Well, first and foremost, right, when you are walking with God, God formed you. Before you were born, he knew you, right? So he has a purpose and a plan for your life and a destiny for you to walk out and co-labor with him, okay? Now, what we don't often realize is, is we think that we're we're in control. We're the ones steering everything. We're the ones calling the shots, right? We're the ones that are literally like pulling all the strings and making all the stuff happen. But we're not, right? And we've been humbled and we found that to be the case. However, what we then do is we can, if we're not careful, get caught up in things not happening in our timing or in the way that we expected or things happening quite the opposite like there's so many opportunities where we can get frustrated where we can get upset where someone can offend us where there's just constant distractions right that can threaten us if we allow them and what i know to be true is you do not want to be involved in anything in any battle that is going to get you off the path of destiny if it doesn't have to do with your destiny don't even entertain it it's not even worth your time, right? You've learned how to block out other things that are distractions. Same thing. Anything that is irrelevant to your destiny, it's not worth fighting, okay? So this idea of don't frustrate the grace. Grace is what we have working for us. It's a flow. It's a creativity. It's alignment. It's being in agreement with God, okay? And I say God's vibes matter because I didn't know God. I didn't know God's character. And there was reasons why I didn't trust that, but they were untrue, right? Or there were just times where I didn't know how to hear God for myself or how to obey God's voice, or I didn't know any of that. So God's vibes matter. They had to be more important than any other vibe I could catch, okay? Or any other vibe that I could bring or influence with, right? So immersion was the new plan. I got to immerse myself in the word. I've got to repeat the promises over my life. And I've got to get an agreement because I don't want to frustrate the grace. I don't want to be doing good things that aren't God things. Because ultimately, if God doesn't build the house, it's not going to stand, right? So I ain't about that. I've seen so many things from start to finish that... Even at the finish line, yeah, you accomplished it. And you can say that you, in my case, I can say that I accomplished it in my own strength and by my own talent and my own efforts. But no, God was pulling the strings at the end of the day and facilitating that and allowing that to happen. But because God didn't initiate it or because God didn't lead me to that, there was a lot of suffering and a lot of pain and a lot of stress and a lot of overwhelm that I probably didn't have to go through. However, God works all things for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. Make sure you don't leave that part out, right? So even if, in this case, I make mistakes or I get off the path, I can't really get off the path if I'm called according to his purpose and I'm genuinely doing my best to align, okay? So what am I saying? There's a difference between hard work and obedience, which is hard work, getting your, your flesh, your mind, your will, your emotions to submit to your spirit. That's freaking hard work, right? But it's different. It's different than doing all this extra effort that doesn't lead to anything. It's just vanity, right? I'd rather put all of my energy and effort into things that I'm led to do. Yes, it's going to take discipline. Yes, it's going to take self-control. Yes, it's going to take patience. Yes, it's going to take all that I've got to do that, right? But I'd rather get my soul under control and, and do what I'm here to do than get off the path and get twisted in some other funky stuff and have to heal and recover from that before I can get back on the path, right? There's just a different way to flow. You can either try to swim upstream and against the current, 
or go with it. And if you frustrate the grace, it's worry, it's fear, it's leaning on your own understanding, it's taking things into your control, it's being worried about money, worried about resources, frustrated about somebody's response or lack of response, trying to control this, right? It's a lot of that, which is just wasted time and energy when surrender says, God has a solution. He had a solution before I ever had a problem. God is the one that ultimately is pulling strings. If God wants me to have a promotion, God will pull the string on whoever my boss is. If God wants to open the door, God will pull the string on whoever can open that door for me, right? If God wants to remove somebody from my life, God will pull the string on that person and help them see their way out, right? If God wants to do something, God will. God will, okay? So it's important because your experience, right? Peace is one of the greatest things. You need to protect your peace at all costs, right? It's one of the greatest blessings and gifts that you have. And one of the most interesting thing is somebody that has the power to react, somebody that has the power to fight back, somebody that has the power to set someone straight, but chooses not to and chooses to keep peace and to pursue destiny, not prove a point, that's power. That is power, okay? And it's character, right? So when you're going with the flow, when you're in alignment with God, you have wisdom, you have self-control, you have kindness, you have love, you've got the fruit of the spirit working for you, right? And when there's something about when you get right with God, when you get about God's business, he has an interesting way of taking care of your business. So really the real work is to not frustrate the grace. It's to surrender. It's to get out of the way. It's to trust God, to walk in obedience with God, to keep your joy, to determine that I'm going to be joyful and stay in my strength no matter what. If that person doesn't, if that person lets me down, if I get stuck in traffic, if I get a weird phone call, if you know, it doesn't go at work the way I wanted it to. I'm determined to be joyful and in my strength, no matter what. Now, that's not to say that you're not going to have moments, but because of that commitment and really that conviction, that knowing of this is how we're going to show up, it's easier to get back to alignment versus wasting a whole day, a week, a month because of a bad moment, right? So when you go with the flow, the great thing happens when you're in alignment, that's when all of the blessings, all of the goodness, every good and perfect gift flows from above and you're in receive mode. When you surrender, right, you stop fighting, you stop controlling and you let God help you. (laughs) I like to, to say when you're praising God and your arms are up, it's like, daddy, help me lift me up. So sometimes we get stuck, right? And sometimes we just need a lift up, right? So that's what I like to think when you're praising, you're getting your focus back on where it needs to be and your mind is being renewed and being transformed because you're focusing on the right thing. So as you focus on the right thing, you start removing the wrong stuff out of your mindset. And really what you're doing, right? When you're being transformed, you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind. A right spirit is being renewed in you. Your heart is being purified. You're getting a clean heart, not a heart that's full of all this stuff. And with that, you can show up and create new, okay? New legacy, right? New experiences, new outcomes, new results, a new way of experiencing life, right? You, When you focus on the new thing, when you forget the former things, meaning you're only going to be fixed and focused on perceiving what those new things are. You can't see both at the same time. When you're fixed and focused on perceiving the good thing that God has for you, the new thing that God has for you and staying in alignment, alignment requires your focus. Okay. I was a gymnast at one point. So picture being on a balance beam, which is very narrow and very high, (laughs) right? And doing acrobatics. It takes all of your focus to stay on that beam. Okay, you can't look left, you can't look right. You've got to stay fixed and focused on the beam. And you can't just look straight down because that'll get you off. You've got to look where you're going. Okay. So even for example, if I were to do a backflip on the balance beam, I'm not looking up 
right? I'm looking where I'm going. So I'm going to nail it on the beam. That's what I'm going to look at. I'm going to look to that, okay? So the same thing with this. You decide that you're going to remain fixed and focused on the objective. Oh, my objective is to keep my joy no matter what. So I'm not going to let my focus hang out in anything less for too long. And basically what you're doing is you're kind of taking yourself on your own spiritual boot camp. This is practical wisdom, okay? So you're taking yourself on your own spiritual boot camp, if you will, where you are literally training your mind what your mind is going to think. And you're training yourself to show up in your spirit, not in your impulse or your reactions or your human nature and you're training yourself to live from your identity live from your authority live from your real power not your perceived power okay which is all internal whenever we get it twisted we're trying to shift something outside of us when the real shifting needs to happen within we need a new belief to hang on to. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We need to get in the right spirit, a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, not fear, not doubt, not anxiety, not insecurity, not resentment, not bitterness, not comparison, not jealousy. We get it twisted, right? Because we're not training. And then our hearts, we've got to guard our heart, right? Because this is where all the issues of life flow from because we're letting seeds get planted, right? And we're growing and watering them. And basically what that's doing is it's creating an emotional home. Okay. So out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak, right? So whatever is going on in your heart, it will come out. But you have emotions, which is how you feel. It's how you perceive. It's how you assign meaning to things. And it's how you put energy in motion. So if your emotion, right, is not aligned with truth and with your power and with your identity, your emotional home then is not of truth. It's of probably what we come up with in our humanity, whether that's fear, whether it's worry, whether it's doubt, whether it's insecurity, whatever that is. So you've got to train yourself out of that comfort zone and you train yourself by renewing your mind, right? By surrendering, by being humble. I don't know all the answers, but I know the one who does. I don't know the right timing or the right strategy, but the how and the timing are not my job. My job is to trust and to surrender and to make, remain fixed and focused on the objective and the mission and get back to it, right? So even though you get distracted, you can still get yourself back on path if you know the mission. And it's this determination of, I know who I am. I know whose I am and I know what I'm about and where I'm headed. I don't need to know all the details then. I just need to know my next step. That is it. Okay. So the encouragement on today is to get into a place whenever you know that you're starting to feel like this and you're gripping life, you're like white knuckling it. <laughs> the key is to surrender, to start to let go and to just surrender so that you're in receive mode. Whenever we're gripping, whenever we're trying to control, we can't literally receive any new information. And usually when we're in that state, we, we create a mess. We say things that we can't take back. We react impulsively and do things that we regret later. It's just not a good time. So whenever you feel that start to bubble up from within, know that you need a soul timeout. And that is time to be transformed by the renewing of your mind to allow Holy Spirit in this case to help renew a right spirit in you and creating you a clean heart so that you can be refreshed and renewed and remember that you are redeemed and go out and handle things, right? Get back in your joy, which is your strength. Because without that, anything that happens potentially could shake you and move you. And that's not the kind of character <laughs> that's going to allow you to be stable in uncertainty and stable in times of challenge and growth, right? It's going to require a lot of focus and all of the fruit of the spirit, right? So the encouragement would be that there's a different way to experience life. And it's all about deciding what is your approach going to be? 
do you really want to fight and go upstream or do you want to go with the flow? And going with the flow is surrender. It's surrendering control. It's surrendering your agenda. It's surrendering your timeline. It's surrendering your purpose and your plans because God's got the ultimate plan and the ultimate purpose. And all you need, again, is your next step because we're not promised tomorrow. And all of the worrying, all of the struggle, all of the toil, it's like being in this rocking chair where none of that, it's great that you put your mind on that, but none of that actually brought a solution. It just brought more stress. It brought more excuses. It brought more fear and it didn't move the needle forward in any kind of way, but surrender and letting God take over and renew you right? And refresh you and strengthen you. That gives you strength, right? And then you you get a new strategy from that because you get wisdom, you get discernment, you get your next step. All you need is a word from God. That's it. So my encouragement on today is keep in mind that you're not the one ultimately that is pulling the strings in your life or that is calling the shots and directing it all. There's a greater plan at play here, Right? And you can either agree and align with that, or you can fight and resist it. Those are really your options because life is, is happening, whether you show up for it or not. So how ultimately do you want to approach life? That is your decision. And it's going to take your will and effort to walk that out, whichever you choose. You can choose to be irritable and frustrated and have negative experiences and let that be the emotional home that you keep cultivating and creating day after day after day, or you can do the intentional soul work to get your soul to align with your spirit so that you can create something new. And that becomes your new normal. Not that it's ever normal, because you can't always predict that. But you just get so used to living a spirit led life, not a self led life, because self centered gets us in trouble. Self centered creates a mess. Self centered makes us really not react and take care of our brothers and sisters. It makes us really abuse ourselves in a lot of ways. It just creates a mess, right? So apart from God, I like to remind myself, apart from God, I can do no good thing, right? Every good and perfect gift is from above. And apart from God, I am nothing. The greatest gift that I can give people is my God self, (laughs) right? My spirit led self. So keep that in mind. What are you, the invitation on today is what are you in the habit and practice of agreeing with? Is it with God or is it with your force, the frustration, your timeline, your plans, your agenda, right? And how's that working out for you? And where can you adjust and adapt so that you don't frustrate the grace that is flowing in your life? Blessings are flowing. Resources are flowing. There is overflow. There is prosperity. There's abundance. But somehow you've not aligned with that. You've not agreed with that. So how would your life be different? And where is your opportunity to believe, to activate your faith, to rehearse the right things, to immerse yourself in the truth so that you stop living these things that you don't ultimately want to experience? You don't have to engage with them. You don't have to tolerate them. You can choose something very different. So that is my invitation on today. My encouragement is God is in control and God has a plan. And you don't need to engage in battles that aren't for your destiny. And you ultimately get to decide what your approach to life will be. Do you want to to have messy relationships? Do you want to create more patterns of dysfunction? Do you want to be emotionally a hot freaking mess all the time? Or do you want to do the work to carry yourself different? And who is going to guide that for you? Who is the source that you're going to run to? What is your motivation? Just check these things, test it out, explore it. Because if you don't do the work, you're going to get more of the same. You will. But if you choose to grow and if you choose to be led by something very different, a very different you will start showing up and you'll have very different experiences and very different encounters in a very different life. So think about it. (laughs) Try it on for size. See how it works for you. 
And if you want more resources, if you need any more information around what I am sharing on today, you can visit julianapage.com. There's a couple of great books over there. It's the God's Vibes Matter series, so you can really find a fit for you and a lot of great other stuff over there. So go check that out. And until next time, guys, stay blessed.